I love flying my drone. And I really love flying my drone here in Colombia. So you can imagine my devastation when this turns into this. It's the end of 2019 and a friend of mine is hosting a New Year's Eve party at his apartment. In retrospect, maybe I should have taken the fact that I crashed my drone as a sign of things to come in 2020. <laughs> I had already flown my drone in different cities around Colombia, but I really wanted to get some footage of the fireworks going off all across Medellin. My friend has a small balcony at his apartment and I thought, why not launch the drone, get some great footage of the fireworks, land and go right back to the party. At this point in 2019, I had been flying my drone for over a year and I had never crashed before. In fact, I'm always really careful when I fly my drone. I make sure my firmware is up to date. I make sure I'm flying in a safe location and I always maintain line of sight. In fact, I had never flown my drone from a balcony before, mainly because I like to have plenty of space to operate the drone and especially space to land the drone. But I really wanted some footage of the fireworks and I know plenty of pilots who have launched their drones from balconies before and had no problems. So I thought, why not live a little and just go for it? Famous last words, right? Unfortunately, I don't have any actual video because everything happened before I hit record, but luckily for you, I created an Oscar-worthy dramatic reenactment. <laughs> I hope you're ready. <laughs> At around 11.50, I decide to get the drone in the air to make sure everything is ready for the countdown at midnight. There were plenty of people crowded on the balcony, so I cleared a space so I could launch, and I hit launch to get the drone in the air. I slowly moved the drone out over the balcony, and I let it hover in place just beyond the rail. That's when all the problems started. The app said it needed to verify my account by sending me a code via text message. Once I received the code, I could enter into the app and unlock the flight. But this whole process can take a couple minutes, so I decided I need to land the drone, take care of this, and then I could go back up and record. The problem is immediately after I launched, everybody crowded back onto the balcony. So I didn't have any space to bring the drone back. So I tried to clear space again, but everybody was already in their own conversations and they weren't really listening to me. Eventually, everyone cleared a small space so I could bring the drone back in and land. But by then, a couple minutes had passed and the drone went into auto landing mode. Slowly, the drone started to automatically descend but I grabbed the controls and tried to bring the drone back onto the balcony. What I didn't realize is once the drone goes into auto landing mode, it doesn't stop descending. So as I tried to fly the drone back onto the balcony, it continued to go down. The front propellers hit the rail of the balcony and then it started to slowly fall back. It 
fell away from the balcony and down. Down eight stories and it crashed onto a concrete parking lot below. Remember, this is a dramatic reenactment. It actually hit concrete. <laughs> so for my fellow drone pilots, this crash taught me two things. First, always make sure you check your app to see if you're in a no-fly zone before you launch. Medellin has a small airport right in the center of the city, and my launch point was too close to this airport. Usually, if you're in a no-fly zone, the app will prevent you from taking off in the first place. But sometimes, if the drone doesn't have a good GPS signal, you can launch the drone, and then after the drone's in the air, you'll get this error message saying you need to enter the code. This is what happened to me. But this brings me to my second point. It's a good idea to always check the number of GPS satellites your drone can see before you launch. Usually, if your drone can see less than seven or eight satellites, it means it doesn't have an accurate location signal, and you could run into the same problem that I had. So, after crying myself to sleep, <laughs> the next day, I immediately began to look for a replacement drone. But what I didn't realize is the Colombian government taxes technology imports at a very high rate. So, to replace the drone here in Colombia, the price would be upwards of $2,000. This wasn't part of God's plan for my life. <laughs> Luckily, I already had a trip to the U.S. planned in January, and I was able to go to the U.S. and buy a drone on Amazon refurbished for about $1,250. Still a very expensive mistake, but at least a little less painful. Now I'm back in the air again, capturing the beauty of Colombia with my beloved drone. <laughs> Hopefully, this crash story will be my last crash story. Knock on some good for me, please. But what about you? Have you ever crashed your drone or had a close call? Share your story in the comments below. And if you made it this far in the video, please do me a huge favor and hit the like button and subscribe to Colors of Columbia. I'm going to be posting new videos here every week, sharing my story of living and flying here in Colombia. Until then, fly safely and I'll see you in the next one. The thing is, after I launched, 